Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we are going to be checking out the Age of Sigmar Cities of Sigmar army set. We're going to look at the miniatures up close so you can see all the sculpts. There's a whole bunch of different options, so I'm going to go over that. I didn't have any particular problem with assembling them, but I'm going to show you all of the various options that you can do or what you cannot do when you're thinking about sub-assembling them for painting, because some of them you'll definitely want to do that. All of that will be in this video. Games Workshop gave me an early copy of the army set, so I might review it for you, and within it, it has everything you need to play Cities of Sigmar in Warhammer Age of Sigmar, with tokens and war scrolls and reminder cards and the battle tome where all of those same rules reside, but also within it are pictures of the various models you can play, even ones that haven't come out yet, painting guides so you can try to match the colors of the city's color schemes, and the lore of the peoples from the earlier ages and what is going on with them presently, as well as rules and lore for each of the cities so you can decide the city whose banner will fly over your army. I personally chose Lethys for my city since their lore and their color scheme and even their city rule kind of matches my style of play. Since the cities of Sigmar's allies are most every other order faction like Stormcast Generals, Sylvanus, Seraphon, and so on, I think I'll be building lists where I can play my other armies along with these ones. So the models in this kit include five free guild cavaliers, two 10 model units of free guild steel homes, one free guild marshal with his relic envoy, and an alchemite warforger. The free guild cavaliers have five models to a unit, and you can decide to build either a champion, a standard bearer, and three regular knights, or just build five non-specialized knights. But as your first unit of cavaliers, I see no reason not to build the champion with his arc knight's blade, and the standard bearer, who doesn't lose his ability to wield his weapon, and you give him the standard. There are no build options beyond that that aren't for purely aesthetic purposes, so you can enjoy building them with whichever weapons you find that you like. In fact, this kit is so entirely customizable that you could easily get multiples of these and make each cavalier look different from the next. How so? Well, the entire bottom of the horses are completely separate from the top, and each bottom can go with any top. The rider is attached to the horse from his hips down, so you can't keep rider and steed separate for painting purposes or customization, but from his belt line up, you can place a different knight torso on a different horse. The horse's faces can also fit into any horse body. The horse's tails can fit to any flank, and these accent pieces in the back that seem solely put there to make the model look a bit more busy than your standard cavalry man fit into place behind the rider, and any of the five varieties of them can fit behind any rider. Mostly, as some of the swishing tails won't necessarily fit these accent pieces, so you'll want to dry fit particularly the tails and the accent pieces, before gluing them to make sure nothing gets in the way of anything else. The arm pieces attach at the shoulder and can go on any rider, and then the heads can go on any rider, and the helms themselves can either be glued with the visor up, showing the face, or down, hiding them. And you can certainly leave those off entirely until after you paint the face, if you so wish. That goes for the same with the shields, which are separate from the arm, and it would be easiest to paint the model prior to attaching them. There are more than enough heads for the five models, with them being able to go completely helmeted like I chose, or completely helmetless. Besides the champion, who has only one helmeted head option, unless you just ignore what the assembly says and choose any of the helmetless heads for him. The icon on the top of the standard also has two different options, a skull like I had, or the word Sigmar. But if you also have the infantrymen, who have two more icon options, then you have four options to choose from altogether, because you can fit the icons from either set onto either of the standards. This is a duo of models, though the Relic Envoy is actually a token for the Free Guild Marshal's ability and doesn't actually have any attacks or actions itself. And though the Relic Envoy has only one way to be built, the Free Guild Marshal has three different head options, one of them being female, but I chose the film. I chose the fellow with the helmet hair. I haven't attached his head yet in truth because I still haven't decided whether I'm going to use that head or use a different head altogether. But, I don't know, maybe the old rascal will grow on me. 
He does have functional weapon options, so you'll want to choose between him wielding the sword or a warhammer or a pair of pistols and short sword. A shield is for looks only. You can put it in either hand or you can have him holding his helm instead. His cloak is shining right now because I used a fair bit of super thin plastic glue to smooth away a rather significant join line where his cloak pieces came together. For the Alchemite Warforger, it was straightforward to put together and all pieces were used and there were no options to make so he's a straightforward model. I like the look of him. All you have to do is follow the guide and he is built fairly quickly. He only had about, I think, 13 pieces. For the Free Guild Steel Helms, there are two sprues to build 10 soldiers each, or 20 in total, and there are no weapon options to worry about. So besides building a champion and a standard bearer and a priest for each unit of 10, you have complete freedom with which model gets which weapon and which head. The assembly guide will show you how to build the two champions first, and they are two completely different models. The champions can be identified by the larger decor on their helmets and their larger shields, one of which is not wielding one right now, but I'll fix that now that I know what my options are. You can build two different priests, and there are four head options per sprue for the priest, though only one club, and since I didn't want them both to be wielding the same club with the same tattered shirt sleeve, I decided to take an unused flail from the cavaliers and put it on the male priest, because flails are priest things. And yes, maybe he has more armor on one side of him now than the other, but I think it fits him and I'm sticking with it. For the standard bear, there is only one way to build her, but since her arms and head attach like all of the others and you can have any head attached and the angle that you attach the arm at is up to you, I gave the second standard bearer a different head and lowered the arm in front, as if she just recently blew from it and is now looking off into the distance. I think these models might be a tad top heavy, so she will most certainly be getting some rocks in the environment on her base, perhaps the rubble of a recently attacked town, maybe? Besides those special characters, you have free reign with all of the other models. The guide does give you suggestions on which arms go on which models, but besides sticking to how to build the torso and legs, you can really put on any weapon arm on any person, any head on any person, and any shield on any person without difficulty making everyone look unique, and you'll have a dozen or more heads left over, as well as half a dozen shields or so and the arms for those shields beyond. If you haven't seen these transfers before, they are meant to be added to the standards and all the various people's shields. Think of them as tattoos for your models in terms of using them, where you cut free the transfer you want, you let it sit in water for a bit, while you apply a gloss varnish over the paint that you had already finished, exactly where you want the transfer to go. You then apply the transfer gently with your brush and then put another layer of matte varnish over top to seal it in place. There are more than enough transfers to practice with if you need to try it multiple times and get that transfer in just the right place without having accidentally destroyed it. Thanks for watching. Make certain to like the video if you enjoyed it. Make certain to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification if you haven't already. Make certain to comment below if you had any questions whatsoever about the cities of Sigmar or Age of Sigmar, wargaming or painting or anything that you can think of. Comment below about that and I will catch you in the next video. Bye! Thank you always to the patrons and YouTube members that have decided to support on a monthly basis. I really appreciate you and I hope you're having a fantastic hobby time wherever you happen to be. For victory! That was too much.